There it is, Manflex 55 SRS, and uh, Auto Thrust is armed. And there's Takeoff Inhibit. Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, 320 Sim Pilot. and today we are taking a look at uh, something that causes a bit of confusion and I can completely understand why. That is the takeoff inhibit and the landing inhibit warnings on the ECAM. They're not actually warnings, they're memos and we're going to talk about why they're there and what they're telling us. They are a perfectly normal part of operating the Airbus and uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, we will uh, look at them in greater detail shortly. But they are something you'll see on every takeoff and every landing when flying on the A320 family of aircraft. As ever, I am a real-world Airbus pilot, but none of this is for any real-world use. It's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. We're here ready for takeoff runway 25 at Newcastle for a short flight down to Heathrow. And what we're going to do is uh, jump into the cockpit and take a look at uh, what this warning means. Okay, here we are on the flight deck now, and we are ready to go. We're doing a flap 3 takeoff today, not that it matters, uh, departing down to the south. So what am I actually talking about? What's the warning I'm referring to? It's actually a warning that comes up here, and I keep saying warning, but it really isn't. It's a notification or a memo. It is used by Airbus to tell us about temporary states or changes. Things like the parking brake appear on this little memo section on the right for that reason. Same for the landing lights, just to advise us that they're out. But they will not be out for the whole flight, they're not intended to be, so uh, these will disappear when they're not needed anymore. Which, by that, I mean when we've t turned them off, so the parking brake or landing lights are off. Underneath here, you will see on takeoff, in magenta take off inhibit you'll see it on takeoff and you'll see it again on landing and I'll bring up a screenshot of what that looks like now hopefully for you so what that memo is telling us is that the airplane has inhibited several warnings that could happen during the takeoff it's a phase of flight so the Airbus is very clever and it divides its flight up into phases we have uh, all, all sorts of these phases as we go through the process but this is why the airplane knows uh, things like when to show us the wheel page down here you'll see that automatically it's showing us the wheel page whereas when we were on stand it was automatically showing us the door page it's incredibly clever it's a system that i absolutely love i think it's great it just eases the workload on the pilots and this is why when you open the cabin doors on the airbus when you're parked up at stand or when you turn off the engines you don't get a series of warnings like you do in some other aircraft for example the crj which does not have this same system so this system allows the airplane to know which phase it's in, and it's listed in 10 different phases. So the airplane divides its flight into these in its own mind. So the first phase starts when you have electrical power. Then the second phase will begin when you start your first engine. Then you'll get another uh, your third phase when the first engine goes to takeoff power. And then you'll enter another phase at passing 80 knots through to liftoff. So it's after we set our first engine to takeoff thrust, we will see takeoff inhibit in magenta down here on this screen. And that will appear because we are entering the takeoff inhibited phase where certain cautions will be inhibited. Not all of them. Some of them won't be inhibited until we pass through 80 knots on takeoff. So an example is the electric static inverter fault. That is inhibited from as soon as we set takeoff thrust uh, and it will stay inhibited until we pass through 1500 feet. But other faults may uh, still caution up until passing 80 knots for example. The point is it is not required to be alerted to the pilot during takeoff so it's inhibited above 80 knots to lift off. The reason is we don't want the airplane to reject a takeoff which is quite a, a high um, risk situation by comparison to getting airborne normally. So we don't want the pilots to be distracted with cautions that aren't related to the performance of the airplane. Now an engine failure we will find out about the airplane will tell us we will get the warnings because it's important and we need it it changes our takeoff plan whilst we're taking off but sort of some of the more minor electrical faults or some other there's, there's loads of different small faults that can happen um, and so they're quite cleverly hidden away by the airplane it knows we don't want to hear them and what it would do is after we leave that phase it would then provide that warning to us when that is does depend sometimes it's at liftoff there is another phase of 1500 feet in the climb out so uh, quite commonly on um, in the airbus if you've had a fault on the ground or maybe you're even you're running with a fault so you know you have a um, one of the generators turned off for the flight or something you may then hear again about it after passing 1500 feet on takeoff you'll get the caution that's not quite simulated i don't think yet in the fly-by-wire but we should see the takeoff inhibit warning which all it is, it, it sounds like it's telling us not to take off, but that's not what it's doing. It's inhibiting the warnings that we don't need to find out about. So uh, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to run the takeoff and then we will um, have a look at it and there will be another one on landing. So I'm going to have the uh, ECAM memo or ECAM page up uh, full screen for you guys. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run our normal takeoff, relatively nice conditions. So 
parking brake off, holding it on the brakes, 50% on the N1, start the clock, half side stick forwards. The new auto thrust system or the fade net control that they've added to this fly by wire mod is excellent. Look at that, those engines spool nicely with a good sort of time up to the right percentage without bursting through, which they used to do. Now we'll go for our takeoff. There it is, Manflex 55 SRS, and uh, auto thrust is armed, and there's takeoff inhibit. H to 100 knots, size six neutral. And we'll rotate. Positive climb, gear up, nav mode, and away we go. So you'll see that takeoff inhibit came when that first engine went to take off power. The 80 knots, above 80 knots is a, a separate um, criteria that's built into it actually. <laughs> so there we go. So from takeoff power, and then around 1500 feet above the ground, which remember is not on the altimeter, it'll be on the radio altimeter. We should see that disappear again. And then if a warning had occurred in the meantime, it would now come to us when that warning disappears. Let's see. There's 1500 feet and it's gone. So now we would get the warning if there had been a failure on takeoff that the airplane decided did not actually affect the, uh, the safety of the flight. So to recap then, the takeoff inhibit message comes up on the ECAM, it's a memo, and it comes up because we are entering a phase of flight where the Airbus doesn't want to bother us with nuisance warnings that it doesn't think are relevant. The warning, or sorry, the memo that tells us that will appear after our first engine goes to takeoff power and it will disappear at 1500 feet above the airfield. Certain failures will be hidden for some phase of that, so there's actually uh, we go through three phases from when we set power to when we get to 1500 feet above 80 knots there's another phase after liftoff there's another phase so you can get warnings that appear before 80 knots you can get warnings that appear after liftoff but before 1500 feet it's, it's all uh, a little bit complicated but that memo of takeoff inhibit will appear from first engine takeoff power through to 1500 feet because for that whole time there are some warnings that could be hidden away from you um, and then they will be revealed when you leave the uh, takeoff inhibit range at 1500 feet Okay, great. So now we are returning to Newcastle. Let's imagine we had to return for some reason. And we are on approach for the landing. And we're just going to take a look at the landing inhibit. It functions in exactly the same way. It is going to appear in the same place. It would just say landing inhibit in magenta. And what it's going to be telling us is uh, the same thing. The certain warnings and cautions are going to be hidden from us because they aren't relevant to the landing and they could therefore be distracting. Again, fantastic system, really cleverly thought out. Um, this phase is slightly different on the timings that flap two there um, so for the landing phase uh, it will appear uh, in or I should say after 800 feet above the ground on approach uh, and then it will finish um, after we slow down below 80 knots so we could get the warning later on on the rollout so if we have a failure sort of on final approach below sort of 800 feet uh, then we may get that caution not until we get below 80 knots so sometimes you're rolling out in the Airbus uh, and you will think everything's fine and then suddenly you'll hear a ding <laughs> and you'll find out that something had actually failed but the airplane had hidden it from you because it just isn't isn't relevant so let's take a look at that fantastic to see this modeled by the fly-by-wire team really impressed here we are now on final approach on the ILS into Newcastle so I'm expecting below 800 feet on the rad out remember not on the Q&H it'll be 800 feet above the airfield that these phases are in there's 10 phases in the airplane um, it uh, starts from all sorts of different things they're not too relevant to us all the time um, they're mostly a sort of Airbus automation thing but uh, it does provide us a bit of information about what we're looking at here so coming down then let's see what happens at 800 rad out there's 880 and 800 auto brake low comes up and I'm expecting landing inhibit there it is so that is not a problem it is totally normal you'll see it every approach <laughs> um, I've, I know some people you know it's tempting to think that there's a problem but no it is completely fine and now it's going to hide the warning um, so if we would have a failure now then it would uh, it would just save that warning until we get below 80 knots on uh, rollout however there are some warnings that could occur maybe they'll be hidden now but they would tell you a touchdown it, it, there are different phases again built into this landing inhibit phase uh, but not going to be not going to be too much concern to us 
So let's uh, take over, give it a landing, and then, um, yeah, that should about cover it. The new automatics in the fly-by-wire system are just an absolute joy. Really impressed with it. It's so nice to fly on final approach now. Those thrust settings are still a bit low. I'd like to see those increased. Um, it, you know, typically over 40% M1 would be required on the final approach. Pappies as well seem to be out of line. 40, 30, 20, retard. Idle the thrust. Five. Hold it there. There's touchdown. And welcome to back to Newcastle. <laughs> we haven't been away for long. So we'll see that landing inhibit disappear, hopefully, as we slow down below 80 knots. Let's squeeze on those manual brakes. Get ready for the exit. You can see low water brake. And there we go, 80 knots, it disappears. So amazing piece of, uh, or amazing addition by the fly-by-wire team. Really, really great to see it modeled so nicely in the in the simulator. So that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been useful for you. Just a little bit piece of background information on the, and one of those many, many systems the Airbus uses to keep us safe as we go flying. And uh, a great piece of work by the Fly-By-Wire team to get that implemented so well in this, uh, this free mod. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. There'll be more guides and tutorials coming to this channel soon, uh, as well as plenty of live streams. So do please subscribe if you'd like to see more of those. Otherwise, do please keep safe and well, and we will see you again in another video or live stream very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.